Hello and welcome to Sustainable Outlook, a podcast from global law firm K&L Gates, where we discuss the transactions, technologies and trends in the sustainable economy. We hope you enjoy this discussion. Please reach out with suggested topics or guests or questions about how we can work together to create a sustainable economy. Hi, and welcome to the show. My name is Alyssa Moyer, and I'm a partner in the environmental and energy law practice groups at KNL Gates. Today, I'm very excited to introduce you to Christy Harlan, our guest on the show. Christy is Senior Vice President, General Counsel, and Corporate Secretary at Weyerhaeuser, one of the world's largest private owners of Timberlands. Weyerhaeuser owns 11 million acres of Timberlands in the U.S. and manages even more in Canada. They're all managed on a sustainable basis in compliance with internationally recognized forestry standards. And I'm really excited to dig in and hear more about Christy's work. And then at the end, we'll reveal how I first got to know Christy and why this is kind of a full circle moment for me to be able to interview her. So first, Christy, thank you for joining us. Really excited to hear from you today. And I think first, I just wanted to tee off for our listeners what your path was to your leadership role at Weyerhaeuser. How did you get there? How did you decide this is the place for you at this moment in your career? Thanks, Alyssa. Well, I'm really happy to be here today and talking about Weyerhaeuser. You know, I sort of feel like I was destined to work at Weyerhaeuser. We have a family history in the industry. My grandfather drove a log truck and my dad was a logger and a forester. And I grew up in small timber towns where almost everyone we knew in the town was connected to this industry in some way. I had worked with Weyerhaeuser for several years as outside counsel at Kano Gates here in Seattle, and I'd always really enjoyed working with the people at Weyerhaeuser, and I just admired what the company does and how it does it. So when the opportunity came to join the Weyerhaeuser team, it just felt like all of the stars had aligned to bring me here. And I was really proud to be the first female general counsel at Weyerhaeuser and be able to be a part of the amazing history of this company. And of course, my parents were thrilled that I'm continuing our family legacy in the timber industry. That's great. Yeah, I do some work in the agribusiness industry, and my father, who grew up on a dairy farm, is very happy. And my grandfather, who was a veterinarian, loved hearing about that, too. So it's nice to have that legacy and that inheritance. So speaking of legacy and inheritance, in a lot of ways, sustainability is not at all new to Weyerhaeuser. Can you tell us a little bit more about the heritage of sustainability at the company over its long history? Absolutely. Um, So, you know, sustainability is one of those words that, of course, you hear people use a lot now. But at Weyerhaeuser, we were doing it long before anyone really knew what that meant. It's really just part of our DNA and how we do business every day. So when you think about Timberlands, it takes decades to grow a tree. 25 to 50 years can pass before a commercial harvest delivers a full return on our investment in tree planting and growing. So everything we do in our forests considers the long-term view including ensuring a sustainable supply of wood fiber now and in the future, as well as protecting all of those additional benefits that forests can provide, clean water, clean air, critical areas for biodiversity. And because we've been doing this for over 100 years at Weyerhaeuser, we're real experts in tree genetics and forest ecology, and we really have a deep understanding of what it takes to maintain a sustainable, healthy forest ecosystem. We were really early advocates for reforestation after harvest. So, you know, 100 years ago, it was really uncommon to replant trees after you harvested them. Usually Mm -hmm. forests were cleared to prepare land for agriculture use or for a settlement or a town. And there weren't often replanting efforts. People at that time just weren't focused on the long term view of the benefits of active forest management. So Weyerhaeuser was one of the first companies to buy land in the West and to start thinking of forests as a sustainable resource that could be managed for future generations. In fact, in 1925, Weyerhaeuser lobbied for federal legislation to support our vision of reforestation as a sustainable way to manage forests. And we've just continued to build on that legacy. In 1941, we established the first certified tree farm in the United States. And it happens to be located in the small town where I went to high school. And by 1986, Weyerhaeuser planted its two billionth seedling in the blast zone of Mount St. Helens. So we, we really have a long history of sustainability at the company. 
That's great. I had the opportunity to go visit one of your tree nurseries, and it was just amazing to see the hard work that's going into that facility and the the love and passion that the people that I met there have for growing these little baby trees. Um, I really enjoyed learning a lot about that facility. It was great. So you have this long history and legacy, and which is really astounding when, when you stop and think about it um, and how much that has shaped the forests of, of the West and really the entire United States. So what do you do now? What does the company get to do now to kind of carry this forward into what sustainability means today? Yeah, so sustainability is still very much at the core of, of our company and what we do. We we have a really strong commitment to sustainable forestry, and that's guided by our sustainable forestry policy that we have in place at the company that sets all of our expectations for how we manage our timberlands. That ensures that we're meeting our customers' needs without compromising the ability for future generations to meet their needs. One of the most important things we do in the sustainable management of our timberlands is that we balance our harvesting and our growing. And, you know, a lot of people are surprised to find out how much we harvest because it's a lot less than they would think for a timber company. Each year, we only harvest about 2% of our forests. And so that's really a pretty small amount when you look across our 11 million acre portfolio in North America, in the United States. And all of our timberlands are reforested after we harvest them. So on average, we're planting about 150 million tree seedlings each year. And this means that we have millions of acres of forests at various stages of growth at all times throughout our portfolio. And and all of this work is enhanced by our certification to the Sustainable Forestry Initiatives Forest Management Standard. This is what we commonly refer to as SFI. And this certification gives our customers and our other key stakeholders with an objective third-party determination of whether we're implementing sustainable forestry practices and making products that come from legal and well-managed sources. And globally, only about 11% of forests are certified to a forest certification standard. So, you know, we're really proud that our entire portfolio meets this standard. And, And we work really hard to make sure we maintain this certification. The SFI standard includes more than 100 requirements that govern all aspects of how we grow, harvest, and replant our forests, from conducting biodiversity research to building roads that protect our streams and rivers from sediment. And and we have external auditors that visit our timberlands multiple times every year to ensure that we are meeting the requirements of these standards. And then we also, in addition to our timberlands, we run a wood products business where we convert logs into lumber and other wood products. And, you know, in that business, we have some of the more traditional issues faced by manufacturing companies. So we're really focused on our internal energy consumption. We meet about 70% of our own energy needs using renewable biomass. We've improved energy efficiency in our mills by 14% over the last five years. We've reduced our greenhouse gas emissions by more than 50% over the last couple decades. And we're reusing or recycling 98% of our waste. So there's really a lot of great sustainability work going on in all areas of the company. Wow, that's that's great. And thank you for touching on some aspects that our listeners might not normally associate with a timber company, right? When you talk about some of those safety standards and your renewable energy sourcing. I know that I've been able to learn a little bit more about that and some of the work that I've been able to do with um, with your company. So that's been exciting. So my next question, I kind of want to get down into the weeds a little bit. So this is something I ask myself every day. You know, what is it that I'm doing on this kind of daily ritual practice that contributes to the bigger picture? And sometimes I don't know, right? I'm lost in drafting language around a wetlands mitigation credit or trying to figure out a specific way to change the use of a water right. And then sometimes I can pull back and see the bigger picture. So I'm curious, I feel like we kind of just talked about big picture. For you, on a daily basis, kind of what is it that you do if you have a couple examples that um, is putting sustainability into action? Yeah, absolutely. So sustainability really is a part of almost everything I do. Um, Even if I am drafting and getting in the weeds on something, it's part of our bigger sustainability picture. So I I serve as part of our senior leadership team where we set our sustainability strategy and we keep the company focused on our our critical sustainability opportunities with our board's oversight and direction. Um, And then we have a sustainability team that's primarily tasked with implementing that strategy. And they work with cross-functional teams and business leaders on our various goals and initiatives. So as part of this work, the legal team works closely with the sustainability team and the cross-functional teams. We help ensure that 
as a business, we understand and are complying with all the various environmental safety and other laws that impact us. We help support efforts for conservation and species preservation. We support wetland mitigation banking and recreational lease programs, and we work on renewable energy deals. Our sustainability strategy also includes a focus on the governance side, which our legal team has primary responsibility for. So this includes following best practices with respect to our governance structure, ensuring we have robust policies in place to support focus on compliance. Uh, it also includes having a strong business ethics program and a discipline risk management program. And both of those teams are housed within our law department as well. And then our legal team works a lot on sustainability related disclosures in our proxy statement and our SEC filings and other documents, which we've really focused on expanding that disclosure over the last few years to provide additional transparency. And then I also spend time engaging directly with investors and other stakeholders on sustainability topics throughout the year on a regular basis. Fortunately, we have a really talented legal team and uh, we all really enjoy digging in and helping support our sustainability goals. So it's a, it's a really rewarding part of our job. That's great. Yes, I can attest to that. I really like working with your legal team. It's a great group of people with a lot of energy. So you were talking a little bit in there about discussions with stakeholders and investors and kind of talking to them about, you know, what you've done and what you're doing. What are the conversations around, you know, the future of sustainability? What do you see are kind of new emerging aspects or something that's new now that you didn't expect to work on, you know, a couple of years ago? Or is there something kind of cutting edge that's, that people are talking about in the buzz of conversation around sustainability? Yeah, so you know, one of the really exciting things that we're seeing emerging in our industry right now is the increasing focus on the use of wood as both a housing solution and a climate solution. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you think about housing, today most single family homes are built out of wood. It's versatile, it's beautiful, as we've been discussing, it's renewable, and a wood-framed home results in lower embodied greenhouse gas emissions than steel or concrete. So, it's really the ultimate green building material. And one of the things we've really focused on as part of our sustainability strategy is enhancing the awareness and use of wood as a sustainable building option for a wider range of structures. So, think about multi-level buildings that might typically be made out of concrete or steel. And you'll often hear these conversations center around the words mass timber, which is kind of a catch-all term for a variety of wood products that provide structural performance and are carbon friendly. We already have our wood products being used in these types of projects. For example, our, our Paralam product supports the lower levels of an 18-story dorm at the University of British Columbia. And we do see some multifamily housing structures being built out of wood, but most aren't because that's historically been restricted by building codes. We've all seen in the news that quality affordable homes are in short supply across North America right now. So one of our right. priorities is to support adoption of building codes that would allow broader use of these innovative wood products to help address those housing needs with a green building material. And then at the same time, wood also has a tremendous role to play in mitigating climate change. Um, you know, as everybody knows, climate change continues to, to be an increasing challenge around the globe. With the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere at record levels, climate change has the potential to cause significant disruptions in the world. And there's a lot of focus right now on coming up with creative new ideas on how to solve this problem. Fortunately, one of the largest opportunities to remove CO2 in, from the atmosphere already exists exists and its forests. As trees grow, they, they naturally sequester CO2 and they store it as a solid carbon in their trunks and their branches. And then when we harvest those trees, as we convert logs into two by fours and other products, they continue to store that carbon for decades. So, you know, it may seem counterintuitive to people to think of harvesting trees and manufacturing as part of a climate solution, because people often forget that second part of the story that the trees we harvest for our wood products continue storing that carbon for a very very long time. And since we quickly plant new trees to take their place, those young forests immediately begin absorbing even more CO2 from the atmosphere. So it's just this amazing sustainable cycle that continually pulls CO2 out of the environment over time. And the cycle is net positive for the environment, even when you take into account the greenhouse gas emissions that are required to harvest and manufacture those wood products. So, you know, at Weyerhaeuser, as the steward of millions of acres of working forests in the U.S. and Canada, and one of the largest producers of wood products in the world, um, we're really uniquely positioned to be a part of this solution to this global challenge. 
So this is another one of our key sustainability focus areas. We're very actively engaged in a variety of initiatives around this, including mm -hmm. the development of forest carbon accounting guidance. And we're working with a variety of industry peers, carbon experts, and other stakeholders to explore forest carbon project opportunities. And there's just a lot of really great, exciting work going on around this. And, and we're excited to, about the role that we can play in terms of a housing and climate solution. That's fantastic. I hadn't, you know, thought that much about the continued storage of the carbon in the wood product. I don't know why my thoughts hadn't gone in that direction, but um, thanks for clarifying that because that's a that's a critical element that I, I think a lot of people don't think about. You know, I was reading The Giving Tree to my seven-year-old this morning by Shel Silverstein. I don't know if you remember that book. And in some ways, I find it to be heartbreaking. And at the same time, like it's such a beautiful story about what one tree can do for one person. And then when you think about the scale of what you're talking about from Warehouser's perspective and your partners and the collaboration, I mean, there's so much potential and already, you know, ability to resolve and solve some of these issues that we're facing. So it's it's really a privilege to, to work with you and to um, learn more about the work that you do in your legal team's, you know, day-to-day -day efforts and what a difference that makes. So we're trying to keep these relatively short so that we can, you know, make sure that our listeners can tackle all of their good work. But I do want to ask you when, if you remember, when I first joined KNL Gates as a young associate, my first project was with you, actually. And I'm wondering if you remember at all, you've had so many deals in your life, if you at all remember the name of the project when I first came onto the scene. And it's okay if you don't. Gosh, you know, yeah, that's really testing my memory. I don't remember what the name of the project was. Yeah, no problem. I just remember it so distinctly because I was so excited to work with you, but I had no idea what I was doing. So it was Project Flakeboard. <laughs> it was the <a> deal. <laughs> of course. Uh, in, in the Southeast. And like I said, I had I did not know what I was doing, but you and Liz Thomas, who's another um, incredible role model at our firm, were very patient, provided a lot of insights and guidance and kind of showed me the way to integrate into a, a team on a, on a diligence deal. So I'm always going to be thankful for that. Really enjoyed being able to come full, full circle and interview for this and learn more about, you know, your amazing work at Warehouser. Anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? You know, the only other thing I might add is we, we do have a web page that has a bunch of our sustainability stories on it. And anyone can go on and kind of take a look at all of the great work that we're doing across the company with respect to sustainability. And one of the things I wanted to highlight is something we just announced last month. And that's our new partnership with Rave Foundation, which is the mm -hmm. charitable arm of the Sounders, our major league soccer team here in Seattle. And Alyssa, I know you sit on the rave board and are a huge soccer fan, so this is near and dear to your heart as well. This is great. Um, I love it. Yeah, we're going to be Rave's official partner in sustainability. And um, so we're going to work with Rave on several projects at local schools, including outdoor learning spaces. And we're going to help with forest restoration projects and local parks. So we get to contribute some of this great expertise we have in environmental stewardship and sustainable forestry to help the community. And I, I just think it is going to be a really, really fun project, too. Yes, that's great. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Rave is near and dear to my heart. So, so dedicated to the community, but also in a really fun way. It's a great organization. So thank you so much for um, the support of, of Rave. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you for your time, Christy. It was great to see you and talk to you and hear from you. And I'm looking forward to just further collaboration. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sustainable Outlook. To listen to past episodes and receive notices for new episodes, Subscribe by searching Hub Talks, that's H U B Talks, in your favorite podcast app. We hope you will tune in next time to learn more about the outlook of the burgeoning sustainable economy.